So the foam board has paper on both sides. To remove the paper from one of the sides, I run a hot bath and leave the styrofoam to float on top. This will keep the top dry and then the side that you want to remove the paper from wet. Within two to three minutes, you'll be able to peel off the paper and then you can clean it up. I lightly sand it with some fine sandpaper and use my hand to rub off any remaining pieces. If you'd like to see a video on how to remove the paper, let me know in the comments. So on this piece, I'm just marking out the door and some windows. I do doors 5.5cm by 3cm and windows at 2 by 3cm. So first I'm just marking out quarter inch spaces up the wall. I do this on both sides and then using the pencil I draw horizontal lines and indent the foam to create the mortar joints. Next up is to mark out some bricks. Each brick is half an inch in length, known as a stretcher. As the bricks will be overlapping, the first brick I mark out, which is a half brick, known as a header, this is quarter of an inch. The next bricks will be half an inch. When you get to the next row, you will start with a half inch brick, and then you will alternate on the next row, starting with a header, and so on. Bevel in the bricks with the pencil all the way to the top. Now to paint the bricks, I mix up some yellow ochre, orange, crimson rouge and candom red paint. When mixing the paint, I don't stir it in too well as I want some variation in the bricks. Next, taking a sponge, I cut a small section off and I'm using the sponge to apply the paint. Dipping the sponge into the paint and then removing some of the excess off and then sponging it onto the wall. This is going to texturize those bricks. Next, I'm going to pick out some of the bricks by painting them in other colours. This is going to add some variation to the wall. First is some burnt umber. I'm just using a fine paintbrush to paint the bricks. Now I'm using some yellow ochre.
And now I'm using some Crimson Rouge. Next is to add the mortar between the bricks. I'm using some stone cast powder for this. I find it easy to work with and it's very durable. It's a nice smooth quality blend of plaster and it's low cost. I mix up the paste, one part water, two parts powder. I make quite a lot of this in this video, but I had many walls to finish. Next is the messy part, but this was also quite satisfying. Using my fingers, I spread the paste all over the wall, making sure it's between all those bricks. The plaster will be workable within 10 minutes. Next, using a wet cloth, I wiped away the excess from the bricks. You will need to do this a few times, but it will be well worth the results. So I've made a few more walls using that same process. I will be gluing these all together to form the main structure of the building. So if you're enjoying the content so far and you'd like to see more videos like this, remember to hit the like and subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Next using cardboard, I mark out the doors. These are 15 centimeters in height and 12 centimeters in width. So for the windows, I find using the plastic that comes in kids' toy boxes works great. Keep any of that packaging aside for future projects. I cut out some windows and hot glue these into place and then sandwich it with another piece of cardboard. This gave me the desired thickness and visually looked good. So for the windows, I cut some stirring sticks down to size and then glue those in place. To create the frames, I'm using some match sticks. I break a few up to give it a bit of character as this is going to be an old derelict burnt down building. And for the window frames, I cut some balsa wood sticks and then glue those on. So to create the floor tiles, I made some tiles 2cm by 3cm using cereal box cardboard. 
I then created some pillars. Check out the video on pillars to see how to make these. The support beams for the flooring I made using cardboard and then I mixed up some orange and red paint to get this colour. I'm going to paint the tiles black and white and then weather the floor down and then secure all the beams and the pillars with some glue. So for the stairs I measured from the base to the top which was 165mm so I decided a 15mm gap between each step would look good this would give me 11 steps so I drew out 11 by 11 grid or 15mm squares then marked out a line between the two extreme points Then draw another line just below that. Next cut that second line away and then cut away where the stair strip will be. For the treads I mark out 20mm wide and 3 inches in length. Hot glue the top and bottom treads in first and then glue the remaining treads in. I want it to have removable floors so that I can easily gain access to the ground. Using some XPS foam, I cut it to a depth of 5mm. Then using a pencil, I bevel in a grid of 1 inch by 1 inch blocks. I then apply a coat of black paint and some Mod Podge just to strengthen that foam. Then I push some matchsticks into the foam, snap them off, just to illustrate some exposed rebar. I then sponge on some medium and light grey paint and finish it with a black wash. So the last section of the build is the paving slabs around the building. I cut some more cereal box cardboard and glue it down with some PVA glue. I then sponge on some medium grey, light grey and white paint to give it some texture and then I finish it off with a black wash. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, any donations are greatly appreciated. It will go towards future builds. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time friends.